get the language right tonight. Shalom, most high, Christ bless. My name is Captain Joel. And I'm Officer Jezreel. What are we going over today? Love thy enemies. Is the enemies talking about the uh, oppressors? The one that brutally raped our forefathers and foremothers? The one that has committed mass atrocities and genocides against our people? That shoot our people down on the streets? Are we supposed to forgive them? Are we supposed to love for our enemies? Are we supposed to pray for them that despitefully use us and persecute us? Is it talking about the other nations that enslaved us? Or is the Bible talking about something else? You're going to see that the script, when the scripture says, love thy enemies, talking about the enemies of your people. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor. So the Bible, what is, Mo what is Christ quoting? Moses. What you're going to realize, anytime Christ spoke, he always used the precepts or the scriptures located in the Old Testament. So he's quoting Leviticus 19 verse 18. To love thy neighbor as thyself. Who's thy neighbor? Your Israelite brother, your Israelite sister, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Read on. And hate thy enemy. And hate thy enemy. You see, you would think that the enemy is talking about is the other nations. No, no, no. You're greatly mistaken. Read on. Verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Love your enemies. And you got the Christian church. You got the pastors. You got the women that have their husbands shot down the streets by the police officer. Say, see, we got to love our enemies. Yes, see, see, yes, sir. We got to love our enemy. We got to love master. We got to love white man Jesus. But no, the scripture, the enemy that the Bible's talking about is not talking about the other nations. Because God's going to pay the other nations back for all the wickedness and atrocities that they did to the Israelites. Read on. Bless them that curse you. And bless them that curse you. Read. Do good to them that hate you. Do good to them that hate you. Read. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And pray for them that despitefully use you. Am I going to pray for a man that raped my foremother and forefather? Did America pray for Iraq when the World Trade Center was bombed? Was on when they had a plane crash into it? Did, or did they go to war? So America, the most hypocritical nation, that would say love thy enemy to blacks and Hispanics, but when it comes to other nations doing wickedness to them or committed ter um, terrorists against them, you don't see the love then. You see war. You see vengeance. So it doesn't apply. You're going to see what the Bible is talking, really talking about. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 1, verse, no, 4, verse 23. Let's see in the audience of which Christ was speaking to. Because what you're going to realize, Christ only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ didn't speak to the other nations. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And Jesus went about all Galilee. So Jesus, when he, was, when he began his ministry, he went about all Galilee. Who was in Galilee? We're going to find out. Read. Teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So it says, and, and teaching in their synagogue and teaching the kingdom, um, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. It says, and teaching in their synagogues. Let's see what synagogues, what people was he teaching? Give me John chapter 18, verse 20. What people was Christ teaching in the synagogues? Because we think that the Bible is an all-inclusive book. No, 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 no. We're sadly mistaken. Matthew, John chapter 18, verse 20. The book of John chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. So it's Christ says, I spake openly to the world. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, my brother. You see? Aha. Uh -huh. Let's see what world did Christ speak to. Read. I ever taught in the synagogue. Christ taught in the synagogue. We just read that in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. He taught in the synagogue and, and in all of Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Read. 
and in the temple. And in the temple Christ spoke and read. Whether the Jews always resort. Whether the what? Whether the Jews always resort. Christ only talk whether the Jews always resort. It didn't say the Chinese, the Japanese, the Caucasians. No, any, anywhere where the Jews resort, Christ was teaching there in the synagogues. So let's go back to Matthew chapter 4. Now let's go to verse 25. So we establish who was Christ teaching in the synagogues. Matthew 5 verse 25 now. Matthew 4 verse 25. Yes, 4 verse 25. Thank you. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 25. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee. What people? The Israelites, the Jews, which he taught. Read. And from Decapolis. Mm -hmm. And from Jerusalem. Because Jews lived in Jerusalem. Read. And from Judea. Uh-huh. And from beyond Jordan. Uh-huh. Now let's go to 5 verse 1 now. The book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And seeing the multitudes, the multitudes of the Israelites, the Jews. Read. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Bl All right, now go back to Matthew 5, verse 44 now. Now that we established the audience of which Christ is speaking about, let's go deeper into what is the, talk about, what is the Bible reference when it says, Love thy enemies. Let's get the scriptural understanding. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. Let's get Exodus 23. Let's see. Remember, Christ always spoke out of the Old Testament. Christ never made anything up new. None of the disciples made anything up new. They always quoted scriptures from the Old Testament, scriptures from the book of Moses, the prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Jonah. They never spoke out of their own opinion or understanding. All right? Let's get Exodus chapter 23, verse 4. The book of Exodus chapter 23, verse 4. Mm -hmm. If thou meet thy enemy's ox. If thou meet thy enemy's ox, read. Or his ass. Or his ass, his donkey, read. Going astray. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. So we have laws. If you meet your enemy's ox or his ass going astray, you shall surely bring it back again. We have civil laws concerning the nation of Israel. Read. Verse 5. If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying, under his burden. If thou see the what? If thou see the ass of him that hated thee. If thou see the ass of him that hated thee. Who's the him that hated thee? Your enemy. Your enemy. Is it talk about the other nations? Read on. Lying under his burden. And would it forbear to help him? Thou shalt surely help the with Bible him. The Bible says, thou shalt surely help with him. Thou shalt surely help him if you see your enemy's axe, ass or his ox going astray. Thou shalt surely help him even though he hates you. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 22 now. Verse 1. Let's see. So the Bible, the way you understand the Bible is to go precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So the Bible explains itself. The Bible defines itself. So let's see who the enemy is talking about in this verse. Deuteronomy 22 verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray. Saying the same thing. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep going astray. Read. And hide thyself from them. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. So in one verse is talking about the enemies. In the next verse, in another scripture, is talking about the brother. It's to going into the civil laws concerning your people. In which you're going to realize that we have enemies amongst our people. That's always prevalent within the scriptures. Read on. Verse 2. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it unto, unto thy own house, and it shall be with thee, until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him again. And That's like it. Now let's go back to Exodus chapter 22. 23 now. Verse 3. So we just showed you scriptural understanding, showing you that what? The, and your enemies ox or ass, which goes straight, that you're supposed to bring it back unto them, is talking about your brother. It's talking about your brother. Read Exodus 23, verse 3. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 3. Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. If thou meet thy enemy's ox or his ass going astray, Thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. Mm -hmm. If thou see the ass of him that hated thee lying under his burden, 
and would it forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. So the Bible is talking about helping your enemies, returning the ox and the ass back to your enemy, which is your brother and which we precepted in the previous scripture. Now let's go to verse 23. See if verse 23 is referencing the, um, the other nations. Read. Verse 23. For my angel shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites. So the Amorites was the other nations, the so-called Africans, read. And the Hittites. Uh-huh. And the Perizzites. Mm -hmm. And the Canaanites. And the Hivites. And the Jebusites. And I will cut them off. God says, I will destroy them. I will cut them off. So what is, is the Bible contradicting itself? No, it's not. You're, there's a contradiction within your understanding and your doctrine. So why at one particular moment, God is saying, if your enemy's ox or his ass goes astray to return to him. And then the next verse, a couple, a couple verses down. In verse 23, he says, he shall cut off your enemies. He shall cut off the other nations. Show he's not making reference to the same thing. The other nations is not, so in this verse, particular moment in terms of your enemy, it's not talking about the other nations. It's talking about the enemies of your people, in which we just proved. But no, it might not be enough information. It might not be enough um, scriptures for you. So let's get some more. Let's get some more understanding. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 29. Are there other examples? Shown that our own people, our brothers, our sisters, were called enemies. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 18, verse 29. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David. And Saul became David's enemy continually. So and Saul became David's enemy continually. Saul became David's enemy continually. Why? Because Saul was trying to kill David. So what? He became his enemy. Friends don't kill friends, do they? No. Enemies kill friends. I mean, enemies kill other people. So it doesn't make sense. You had enemies amongst our own people. Let's go to Matthew 12, verse 30 now. Matthew 12, verse 30. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 30. He that is not with me is against me. So it's Christ says, he that is not with me is against me. Read. And he that gathered not with me scattered abroad. So if you don't gather with me, me, if you're not doing the work, going from city to city to gather the lost sheep of the house of Israel, trying to teach the gospel to blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, if you're bringing doctrines contrary to this, um, to the gospel, if you're causing confusion and trying to cause division and sow discord in the Bible, guess what? You're enemies to the gospel. You're against the ministry. You're against Christ. That's what the Bible says. So what people during the time of the disciples and Christ's ministry was against him? What people were scattering the lost sheep? What people were causing confusion? What people were seeking the death of the disciples? What people was imprisoning the disciples? What people were the enemies to the gospel of Christ? Let's get Luke 9 verse 22 now. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 22. Saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things. So it's Christ will going to suffer many things. Read. And be rejected of the elders. And he was rejected of the elders. They were against Christ. They was against the minister of the new covenant, of the gospel. Read. And chief priests. And the chief priests. Read. And scribes. And the scribes. Read. And be slain. And they will kill Christ. So they were against Christ, give me Romans chapter 11, verse 27. So that's why Christ says, he that is not with me is against me. The scribes, the elders, the chief priests, the Pharisees was against Christ. So what were they called to call to the Bible? Romans 11, verse 27. The book of Romans chapter 11, verse 27. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Mm -hmm. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. As concerning the gospel, the scribes, the Pharisees, the elders, which was the builders, which they disannulled. They disannulled the building of Christ's kingdom. They disannulled the building and the minister of the new covenant. So because for the gospel's sake, they are not what? As concerning the gospel, they are enemies. Why? For because they're trying to prohibit the kingdom of heaven being administered on its earth and Christ ruling over. Because they said it. If we, allow at these, if we allow everyone to believe on him, the Romans shall take away our, our seat of authority. So they became the enemies to the gospel. Just like people today, they try to prohibit the Israelites from rising. They try to sow discord. They try to sow all manner of evil. 
They tried to bring doctrines into the body. They tried to spread lies within the body. It's the same thing. You be, have become an enemy unto the gospel. Let's go to Acts chapter 26 now. Let's get a, a testimony from Paul because what? Paul was a Pharisee. Paul was a Pharisee. And he's going to show you some of the things that he was doing during the time before he became a, a follower of Christ and a disciple. Acts chapter 26 verse 1. In the book of Acts chapter 26 verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Now let's go to verse 9. Read. Verse 9. I verily thought my, with myself that I ought to do many things, contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You see, Paul says, I ought to do many things, contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He was against Christ. For the gospel's sake, at one point in time, before Paul repented, he was an enemy to the followers of Christ. He was an enemy to the gospel. Read. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison. He shut up, meaning he imprisoned many of the saints. He was locking them up. He was an enemy to the gospel. Read. Having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And they was killing and persecuting the followers of Christ. And Paul gave his voice against them. Was, that, was Paul the followers of Christ's friend? Was he the friend? Was everybody singing Kumbaya, my Lord? Or was he an enemy against the followers of Christ? Hmm, let's do the math. He was an enemy against the followers of Christ. But did Paul repent? Yes, he did. Because of the example that Christ set before the disciples. He says, don't, don't, um, he says to love your enemies. What enemies? The enemies of your people. Why? Because they might repent. There's a possibility by your good deeds. There's a possibility by your example, by you being a light unto them that are in the darkness, you might change their mind. They might catch themselves. Like Saul caught himself numerous times with David. Saul persecuted David. Saul, in many different cases, tried to put David to death. But they, how did David respond? He said to Saul, why are you trying to kill me? Something that's a dog in your sight, a dead dog. I'm nobody to you, Saul. You're the Lord's anointed. Saul never spoke evil against David. He showed them love and respect. And Paul and Saul said to David, you're a better man than I am. Because look, David applied that, love thy enemy. To love thy enemy. Because the enemy is the children of this people, God's people. Because and you're hoping and loving your people, that's a contrary to the gospel, that you win them over. That's what Christ is trying to teach us. Not to love the man that raped our foremothers, the man that shot us, that's, that's um, shooting us down in the streets. Not the man that's imprisoned us, mass incarceration. Not the man that's poisoned us through the water, that's poisoned us through the food. Read. Verse 11. And I punished them off in every synagogue. And Paul punished them often in every synagogue. Read. And compelled them to blaspheme. And he forced them. He compelled them to blaspheme in the name of Christ. Read. And being exceedingly mad against them. He was exceedingly mad. Read. I persecuted them even unto strange... Wait a minute. He persecuted what? I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Wait a minute. He persecuted them to what? Even unto strange wait, cities. Wait, wait. Can we go back to Matthew 5 real quick? I thought Christ wrote that in his explanation to love thy enemies. Did he not say to love them that persecute you? Let's go there. Let's, 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 let's go to that. Matthew 5, verse 44 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 44. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Wait, was not the Pharisees, was not Paul cursing the Israelites? Was they not causing them to blaspheme the Lord of God, of the gospel? Read. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Wait, did not Paul say that he was exceedingly mad? Did he not say he was exceedingly mad against the followers of Christ? Read. And pray for them which despitefully use mm -hmm. you and persecute you. Did not Paul persecute the followers of Christ, even to the synagogues and follow them from city to city? It's talking about your enemies, the children of, your, of God's people, the 12 tribes. That's what the enemy is talking about. So I'll talk about the other nations. Let's go to Luke chapter 18 now. Luke 18. Verse 1. Book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So this is Christ. 
This is the black Messiah saying that men must always pray and not faint. So Christ is teaching us how to pray and what should be in our prayer. Let's see. Does this coincide with the prayer of the, church, the Christian church? That, that all be one and under Christ? That Jews, Gentiles, and Greeks, not knowing that Jews and Gentiles and Greeks is all making reference, reference to the same people, that they're all Israelites. But then the Christian church has mistakenly interpreted scripture to show that these the Gentiles and the Greeks means the people of the other nations. No, 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 no. Christ always spoke to his people and about his people. Now let's see how Christ showed us how to pray. Read verse 2. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. So this, this judge in a city, he did not fear God, neither did he care about man. Read. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. What is the adversary? She said, Avenge me. The widow said, Avenge me of my adversary. What does adversary mean? It means to be averse. It means to be contrary. It means to be against someone. It means to be an enemy. Adversary means to be an enemy to someone. Read. And he would not for a while. So, the man in the city that feared not God did not avenge her for a while. Read. But after he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man. He says, after a while, after a particular time period, he said, though I fear not God and don't regard man. Read. Yet, because this widow troubles me. Because this widow keeps coming to me. She keeps bothering me. Read. I will avenge her. He says, I will what? I will avenge I her. I will avenge her. I will avenge her of her enemies. Read. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. So Christ is teaching us. He's showing us a parable of how we ought to pray. Meaning, and likewise, in like manner, as the widow went to the king which feared not God, and then neither did he regard man. She went to him. She constantly kept going to him. Just like Christ is telling us what we should constantly keep going to the Father for. How we should conduct our prayer. What should we pray for? Read. Verse 6. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Read. And shall not God avenge his own? And let wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought God says to love thy enemies. I thought that you talk about the enemies of the other nations. But God says, if we pray to him, to avenge us of our adversaries or our enemies, the people that enslaved us, that raped our foremothers, our forefathers, that brutally persecuted us, that committed mass genocides and the most the wicked atrocities done to our people, that imprison us, that shoot us down in the streets, that does us unjustly, that feeds us of poison food, chemically induced food, and puts poison in our water. God's shown us. How we should conduct our praise towards these people. Read. Which cry day and night unto him. Wait a minute. Read that again. Verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect. And shall not God avenge his own elect. Who is God to select? Let's go to Isaiah 44, 45 verse 4. Because we think that everybody is elected by God. God chose everybody. Hmm. Isaiah 45 verse 4. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 45, verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. Israel is God's elect. Now let's go back. Israel, the Israelites are God's elect. Read. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect? And shall not God avenge the Israelites? For shall not God avenge, pay back the other nations for what they did to the Israelites? Read. Which cry day and night. Which him. cry day and night. I mean cry in their prayers. Christ has showed us how to pray. Pray for vengeance. Not this whole Christian prayer for everybody to come together. That's democracy. That's America's hypocrisy. Because America doesn't pray for, say, oh, we got to love our enemies. You never see them. And America's supposed to be a Christian state, country. And they say, in God we trust. God bless America. And they say, God bless, and God we trust. God bless America. And they drop the bomb. Then they go and drop the mother of all bombs. Then they go and drop the father of all bombs. But God bless America. They pray and salute to the flag. And they use this Bible falsely. They take the Lord's God name in vain. And God bless America. Then they turn to you Negroes and say, you know what? Pray for them that despitefully use you. Oh, by the way, I'm going to rape your mother. 
I'm gonna use her as a concubine. Pray for us. Oh, by the way, I killed your father in the streets. After I told them, after I told him to show me, show me his wallet. I killed them. Pray for them. Forgive them. Oh, by the way, I killed your nine-year-old son. I forgive you, master. That's not the Bible's what the Bible's talking about. Read. Though he bear along with them. I, verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. The Bible is talking about vengeance. Where do you get this? Love thy enemy. Who told you? Who told you this lie? Who taught you the Bible? Oh, I know who taught you. Go back in history. The same people that taught you about God is the same people that enslaved you. That built churches off of blood. Cemeteries. The church is nothing but is the church is nothing but a cemetery. That's all it is. So the same people that's telling you to forgive them, it's the same people that enslaved you, force you to uh, force you to follow Christianity, force white Jesus on you. The same people. Read on. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh. Shall he find faith on the earth? Because none of you have faith. None of you believe in this Bible. That's talking about praying for the destruction of your enemies. Let's go to Proverbs 25, verse 17 now. The book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 17. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, mm -hmm. lest he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. So the Bible's talking about your neighbor. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee and hate thee. The Bible's talking about thy neighbor. Let's jump to verse 17. <clears throat> verse 17. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee and so hate thee. A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul, and a sword and a sharp arrow. It's still talking about your neighbor. Who's your neighbor? The children of your people, your brother, your sister, the people of your, na your nationality, the people of your ethnicity, your race. That's who your neighbor is. Now let's go to verse 21. Verse 21. If thy enemy be hungry. Who's your enemy? Your neighbor. We just read this whole chapter from verse 17 and downward is talking about your neighbor. Now let's talk about verse 21. If thy what? If thy enemy be hungry, if your neighbor, if your brother be hungry, read. Give him bread. To give eat. him bread to eat, read. And if he be thirsty, if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Dr give him water to drink, read. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Because why? By giving your enemy bread, water to drink and to eat, you're putting coals of fire upon his head. What are you doing? You cause him to think. You cause him to reflect. And why is he doing this to you? Because he's gonna think if you're not. If you're not combating him with the like, um, if you're not giving him what he's giving to you, eventually he's going to meditate and say, wait a minute, why am I doing this? What is the purpose of me doing this? He's not retaliating. So in him not re and you not retaliating, it's going to cause him to think. And, it might, and he might repent of himself. He might repent because of your good example. Read on. And the Lord shall reward thee. And the Lord shall reward thee. Let's go to... Romans chapter 12, verse 18. Now, concerning the other nations, are we promoting to hate the other nations? No, we're not promoting to hate other, the other nations. Because at the end of the day, we sin and we broke God's laws and we caused it to come upon us. We don't have time to hate people. We got too much work to do. The Bible's talking about loving our enemy. It's the enemies of our people. The people that are against this gospel. The people that are sowing discord amongst the body. The people that are, spread, are spreading lies. The people are that are going to persecute us. The people that are going to put us to death. That's what the Bible's talking about. But concerning all men and the other nations, this is what the Bible shows us how to conduct ourselves. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, Live peaceably with all men. If it, the Bible said, if it be possible, because there might be stipulations that's not possible. So if it be possible, read. Dearly, no, read it as, again. if it be possible, as much as lies in you. As much as it lies in you, because there's going to be time where it's not going to be possible, because it's going to be a time that you're going to have to defend yourself. It's going to be a time that you're going to have to be defend yourself. So that's why Paul said, if it be possible, as much lieth in you. 
because sometimes it's not going to be possible. Sometimes you're not going to be able to control, be able to control yourself. Depend on the situation. Read. Live peaceably with all men. So the Bible tells us to be, live peaceably with all men, meaning all races of people. We don't hate everybody, but we are going to speak the truth according to the Bible, and the prophecies will come to pass. So that was the 15 minutes with Captain. My name is Captain Joel, and this is Officer Jezreel. Shalom, Most High Christ bless. Shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.